Hey y'all. All right, good morning. Um, first thing we would like to say is happy St. Patty's Day. Yeah, St. Patty's Day. Hope you're wearing your green. Someone's gonna pinch you. I got my on. I don't have any on. Um, but we wanna make sure that you add this to your spam page. Hey! That one's a good one. Because okay. we see spam. Yeah. And for my people who are adding this to their spam page, email us your work because we know you're watching. Mm -hmm. So just go ahead and do your work and email it to us. And then check in with your friends too to make sure they're doing their work. Yeah, because we know they're seeing it. And um, they're just not trying to do it. Yeah. So, so yeah. But without further ado, we're going to continue to ecosystems. Thanks for our shout outs yesterday. All right. Let's get our screen shared. We are going to be doing ecosystems today, which is one of my favorite things to do because it's talking about animals and how I guess we live every single day and we really don't realize it. Also, don't forget to answer your questions. Um, we see where you have turned in your work and your notes and it's great, but don't forget to answer those questions or, you know, and be thinking about them as you write your notes. Yep, and these are the questions we're talking about. So each day, make sure you're able to, you don't necessarily have to copy the question down, you can if you want to, but make sure you're answering those at the end of your notes, okay? So, what we're gonna be looking at, let me go back. Um, by the end of this video today, we want you to be able to compare and contrast biotic versus abiotic factors, <clears throat> which we're going to talk about these things called limiting factors. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to be able to tell us about density dependent limiting factors and density independent limiting factors, the difference between predators and prey, and then what is a niche. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with notes. Remember, you can go under the classwork tab and they're there. That way you don't have to do it this way during the video or you can do it in the video, that's fine too. So an ecosystem um, is just simply a complex, it's, it's complex and it depends on living and non-living organisms, okay? And an ecosystem pretty much is our environment, where organisms live. Um, now, there are two things that can make up an ecosystem. Hi. <laughs> there are two things that can make up ecosystems. You can have living things or you can have non-living things. <laughs> Stupid. You can have living things or non-living <laughs> non things. Um, living factors are called biotic factors. And remember, bio equals life. Okay, remember the prefix bio means life. And that's how you remember that they are living. Okay. And... Living things include bacteria, fungi, plants, and animals. So really everything in the world, all right, that is a lot. Abiotic, bio still means life here, so bio life. If you have a at the beginning of a word, that's the a prefix a means without or non. Um, so that just literally translates into without life, okay? So non-living factors that are living, limiting factors. And we're going to talk about what a limiting factor is in just a second. And these things include water, oxygen, nitrogen, salinity, pH, temperature, and sunlight. Okay, so you can see that all of those things are non-living. All right, so I'm gonna open up pages. We're gonna talk about what a limiting factor is because that is kind of what the basics of what we're starting is. And there's seven questions on your EOG with this and with salinity um, just a recap from ocean salinity is the measure of how salty water is all right so you want to describe limiting factors you want to. yeah so limiting factors okay so limiting factors are factors what does the word limited mean it means just like if you're driving down the road you have a speed limit it's how fast or how um, something can carry something. So if we could carry, like my limiting carrying would probably be 50 pounds. After that, I probably cannot pick it up. 
Okay, so that's how an ecosystem is. It has a limiting factor. It's a factor that can cause an ecosystem to thrive or to decline. Okay, so your limiting factor is um, how organisms in an ecosystem interact. It's almost like a predator-prey relationship too. If you have a lot of predators and not a lot of prey, then something's gonna suffer. Something is gonna end up dying out. The whole species is gonna die out. If you have a lot of prey and you don't have like a lot of um, predators, then your prey is going to overpopulate. Okay. So you have to have limiting factors. And just like Ms. Pate said, uh, you translate that word limit and factor. It's a factor that limits a population from overpopulating. Okay. Um, we use this word. It's here. almost like supply and demand. Like yeah. right now with toilet paper. Yes. Toilet paper is our limiting factor. It doesn't matter where you go, you cannot find toilet paper right now. Okay, so that's what we're all stressing about. So just imagine if we were in an ecosystem and we couldn't find something that we need as a, no, it's fine. As a whole ecosystem, we would be under stress. And sometimes that happens um, with the ecosystem. So it's like more demand, which is your animals, or, or less supply, so you have more competition. What we have right now, we have competition for hand sanitizer and we have competition with toilet paper and food. So I'm gonna see y'all at Walmart. <laughs> All right, a carrying capacity in environment is literally how much an environment or a ecosystem can actually hold. So I'll do the number or quantity, quantity of people or things an ecosystem can't spell ecosystem environment can hold okay once you re reach capacity it's just like a cup if it goes over capacity water's going to spill out okay so we have to have limiting factors as bad as that sounds things have to die off okay you have to have factors that keep the population under control because if there is more demand, just like Ms. Page just said, for materials and there's not enough supply, competition's gonna increase. Yep, competition's gonna increase. And if you and I are competing over something, one of us is gonna get it and the other one is not. And if it's in the case of animals in an ecosystem and they're, you know, fighting over food, there's a dead animal. If this one eats, it lives. If this one eats, it lives and the other one's gonna die. If this one eats and lives, this one dies. And if it dies, it's not able to survive, reproduce, and pass on its genetic makeup material to um, the next generation, if that makes sense. And we'll talk about that a little bit later with the survival of the fitness. Yep. So when we talk about limiting factors, just kind of going back right here, you have two different types. You either have biotic or abiotic. Okay, so things that could limit are either going to be, and a definition we can put here is, um, what do I want to write? Factors that can cause an ecosystem to thrive or grow. Cause an ecosystem. Okay. All right. So two different types, you would just break it up, kind of do the little chart like we would do in class. You either would have biotic, or you would have abiotic, okay? So they would either be living, or they would be non-living. Like it's a girl for you to Add her to your hey, Please watch my video from today. It is awesome, and there's an extra credit question in there. Shh, don't tell everybody. Mm. And here's Mr. Shear. Add him to your spam page, too. Yep. We're going to go eat. Uh-huh. Okay. We'll be there in a little while. Thanks. 
All right, so if a biotic factor is going to control or it's going to be a limiting factor, that means let's think if we have um, wolf and a squirrel. Because I don't know if I've told y'all, but remember in Yellowstone, I saw this coyote eat this ground squirrel right in front of me, and I've got a really cool picture of it. Um, but would the limiting factor here be abiotic or biotic? And remember, it's something that's limiting the population from growing, right? So if I have, you know, oops, five wolves and 300 ground squirrels, is the wolf population gonna be okay? No, that's what they're eating. And the answer is yes. But what is the limiting factor? It's going to be a biotic factor because the wolves are eating it, all right? The wolves are a living animal. And it's going to, they're going to keep the squirrel population from overpopulating, okay? Same thing. Um, think about, I know this sounds bad, but think about possums. What mischief do possums get in a lot of the times they run across the road and get hit by cars, right? And as crazy as it sounds, not that I want to hit anything, but that's a biotic limiting factor, right? Um, because if I'm driving a car, I just killed the possum. I'm a human. I'm a living organism that just killed another living organism. Um, but it's also serving its purpose because what does that possum do when it's decomposing? It provides food for tons of other organisms on the food chain, which we will get into um, tomorrow. Okay. Abiotic factors. What could that look like? Um, think about if it gets extremely hot outside or extremely cold outside. Let's say that we have, um, a population of animals living in Alaska, right? Who's going to survive if it gets un like just crazily hot in Alaska for some reason? It's going to be animals with more fur or less fur. Probably less because the temperature is hot, but vice versa. If you're living in a really cold environment and it gets extremely cold, is my dog gonna be able to be able to survive there or is an organism that's built to survive in that kind of environment gonna be able to live there? Um, also think about hurricanes. How do hurricanes, how could they act as limiting factors? When they come through, there's a lot of water. That means that organisms are dying because of drowning. Um, and that is not a living thing. A hurricane is non-living. So that would be another abiotic factor. So lots of different things that could happen, but the the thing is limiting factors have to happen in order for our population not to overpopulate our ecosystem not to overpopulate okay okay so we're going to talk about density dependent factors and density independent factors i'm going to start with density independent factors first because these are going to happen regardless of how large your population is and most of your density independent factors are abiotic so that means like uh, weather. Weather is always going to happen regardless of how big your population is. Um, bacteria, natural disasters, like what we're going through now, is always going to happen um, that, if, that we can't change. But it will um, change how large your population is. So some examples are weather, humans, population, natural disasters, fires. And whenever you have density independent, it means loss of organisms and loss of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so independent is kind of like independent of like, you just can't control it. It will happen. And it's then like we natural yep, nature. Yep. And then dependent. If you depend on something, you know, it's, it's one of those things that's density independent factors. It's gonna operate in larger populations and it's gonna be competition between food, water, shelter, space, as well as predation, so predator versus prey, um, parasitism, so think yesterday, our ticks, um, tapeworms, anything that can cause disease and kill, and then down here, diseased. And so this happens by crowding. So if 
limiting factors aren't present, there's going to be tons of competition. And why? There will be a ton of competition simply because there's not enough resources. And think about you. If you, your family need food, water, and shelter, and our family also needs food, water, and shelter, and there's one house, what are you going to do? You're going to want to be, yeah, you're going to compete. You're going to want to be that family who is in that house. Yes, rather than the fittest. And if I'm an organism out in the wild, it probably ends in a predator prey. Yeah, prey situation where the, the most fit organism will survive, pass on their off, off tray, off, yeah, genetics to their offspring, and then the other organism will die out because mm -hmm. it wasn't as fit. Right. Okay. Density dependent factors. Um, those are those are simply things that depend on things that we need. Okay. <clears throat> so for example, if two wolves are hunting for their pack and there's only one animal to hunt, so if I have this wolf and this wolf coming from a separate pack, and then they are both going for one organism that's in the middle of them, what are they going to do? Both wolves are going to probably attack each other first. One of them is going to end up dying, getting killed, the, the least fit one, and the other one will survive, take the prey, and be able to feed their family. Okay, so that is density dependent. All right, and this just kind of goes right along with it. Just the rest of your notes. Um, population numbers of each organism, they're going to fluctuate at a predictable rate, okay? We know that these things are going to happen. It's predictable. We can't necessarily be underpopulated, and we also can't be overpopulated, okay? It's, it's kind of that um, equilibrium where you balance each other out to that, to that right number, okay? Now, Supplies in an ecosystem are also going to fluctuate at a predictable rate, dependent on how many animals are present, how many predators, and how many prey, okay? So, <clears throat> if there are more demand, if there's more demand, think about it right now in the grocery stores, there's more demand for stuff. I went in the grocery store last night, there are way less supplies, and there's a ton more competition, right? Me and this little lady in Walmart need the same thing, and there's one of them left. Who can get there the fastest? I'd probably just let her have it, though. But more demand. There's less supplies everywhere, but there's way more competition because you want your family to have what they need, all right? And that means that there's more animals. Right now, more people are out and about trying to get prepared for being quarantined. If there's less demand, think about a normal day. Less demand, there's more supplies, okay? And there's way less competition. Three weeks ago, I could walk in Walmart and buy toilet paper without- Even thinking about it. Yeah. You know, thinking about somebody attacking me from behind. Now I had to go to five different stores to yeah. get toilet paper and they have it at Lowe's out of our places. It's crazy, okay? So that is the same thing that happens in an ecosystem outside, animals all day, every day that we don't know is even going on. But more demand, less supplies, more competition, less demand, there's way more supplies and way less competition.